Okay, so in part one of the watering at the music house video, um, I had only one pole in the ground, one of these T-posts, and it was that one right over there. Um, but since then, I've pounded in a few more poles. There's another one right next to it on the other corner. There's one over here in this corner. And then there's one over in this corner. So there's four T-posts pounded into the ground along the corners of plots and things in order to help guide the garden hose. And then I've also pounded a T-post over here um, next to the railroad tie that we come into the garden, temporarily at least, as a stabilizer and hopefully grab onto that if we need to step over the fencing. Um, just be extra careful that you don't grab onto the top with bare hands. I recommend wearing gloves whenever you're in the garden, working in the garden, both for your own safety of your hands and also for um, protection during the COVID-19 stuff. So um, yeah, anyway, that one is not there mainly for guiding the hose, but to hold on for when you're stepping over that white picket fence there um, so that you have more stability when you're stepping over and when you're uh, stepping out of the garden area. So um, I just wanted to highlight that as part of part two of the gardening in the video. Um, so when you're running the garden hose, it'll come on the back side of this post here, on the back side, and then I'll go around both of those on the back side of those poles, and then down that row like I showed in the first video. And you'll start at the far end watering, come this way, and then go back around these two poles, and then bring the watering hose around this post in front where my foot is there and then around that pole and then down this row all the way to the end over there and then you'll water those far two the one on the right and then these two over here closest to this pole here so and that's it and uh you'll see that actual process in the video So here we are installing the water filter onto the hose. First, you want to screw in the bottom part into the hose inlet, and you'll be turning that clockwise to install it. Make sure to install it tightly, but not too tightly. Then you take the upper part, and you install that onto the faucet outlet, and you will turn that counterclockwise to install it. I've shown this before, but I wanted to reiterate as well. Then we'll find the end of the hose. Find the end of the hose and move it over the fencing along with the length of some of the hose itself over the little fencing over by the tree trunk that's been carved. Now we'll walk around and walk over the little fencing. There's a pole sticking up out of the ground that I grabbed with my left hand first to steady myself coming over. And we'll go right over to the, the hose, the faucet sprayer, and grab the sprayer. And what I'm doing is I'm routing the sprayer around a couple more poles that are difficult to see in the video, but they are there. And those poles are there to help route the hose. And you can see it takes a little bit of effort to pull that hose all the way down to the end of the first two rows there going along 5th Street. Might need to pull a little bit more hose along like I'm doing in the video. And once it's ready, just pull up on the handle to start the water. And we'll walk over to the sprayer. And uh, when you first 
start out spraying, you'll want to check this, the setting, and you'll want to set it to sprayer, You probably. That is if you're spraying plants that need to be sprayed directly, or at least check the water temperature, put it into sprayer, and it may take a few seconds. Just keep spraying the water out and check the water temperature with your hand. Once it's ready, you can start spraying the plot, or you'll switch the sprayer to soaker setting and put it into the plot, not directly on top of the plants that you're watering, but actually underneath them or near them. But in this video, I'm watering the plants, and you can see I keep moving the sprayer so that the sprayer doesn't stay in one spot. I don't want the water to accumulate in one spot. I want the water to be spread over the whole plot. On those plots, again, in which we actually want the water to be sprayed. Now as you're walking around, you want to be careful where the hose is. You want to watch your footing. There are some hollyhock plants and the raised beds themselves. You don't want to trip over anything. You want to be really careful where, where you're stepping. We don't want to use hose water as much as possible to spray directly on squash plants. The same is true for cucumbers, tomatoes, a lot of different types of plants like those. So right now it's on spray, you can see there. I wanted to move it to soaker like I showed in the first video, so I'm going to rotate this. It's on mist, there's soaker. So I'm going to put it in between the plot here, right near the middle, the center of this plot here. I'm going to squeeze the trigger and then I'm going to um, pull this metal thing back with my finger and uh, just kind of let it run. And now i got to switch it over again from soaker back to sprayer and then uh, I could start spraying some of the other plants again. It's a pretty simple process really, I'll keep that sprayer moving. And just go right through this really fast, really not the most exciting thing in the world to watch, but that's how it is. So as I'm moving along, I'm pulling the hose back down through the row very carefully, making sure that the hose doesn't fall into any of the raised bed boxes as I'm watering. And again, you want to make sure to water the specific types of plants in each plot correctly. And there are some thin raised beds over on the end. You can see where I'm watering underneath the tree. There's some little beds in there that should be planted. And if they aren't all planted, then at some point they will be, so they need to be watered. They usually don't need as much water as the other plots because they, they are shaded most of the day. So you don't have to spend too much time watering those little plots. So um, once you're done watering those little plots, you have to make your way over to uh, the, the last two rows of raised beds. Be patient and stay safe. Wear gloves. If you need to, also wear a mask and a hat. Stay hydrated. Make sure you bring plenty of water with you. So here we are. Uh, there's another pole that I'm routing the hose around. It's difficult to see again in this video, but it's basically directly behind the spigot. And so here's another plot where I change it over to the soaker setting. You can see the water flowing out of there better in this shot. And I'm setting it sort of in the center of the plot that the water will run into different areas where the actual squash plants are located. And again, just as last time, let it stay in there for a few minutes and then finish up. As you're walking around, you want to keep an eye out for plants. Uh, like I said before, the hollyhocks, or the, as the plants get bigger, if you're watering by hand, uh, make sure the hose doesn't trample over or that you don't trample over the plants as you're walking around. 
because those squash plants can get big. You also want to watch for insects and spiders and other creatures as you're walking. Make sure that you don't bother them and that they don't bother you. Usually that's how it goes. So make sure to look down occasionally because sometimes there are piles of ants in particular in this garden. So you can see me looking down there checking for ants because I have noticed ants in this particular area of the garden before. So I, there I go spraying again. Again I'm kind of being mindful of how much water I'm giving these plots. I know that they've gotten water almost every day now, usually in the morning. It's kind of late morning, but I can still see there's some moisture in the plot, so I don't need to water a ton. So I'm almost done here with the watering process. Just going over some of the same plots that I watered before. And then I turn off the spigot, let go of the handle. And then I go and I turn off the water by pushing the handle down instead of up. Simple enough. Now we have to route the sprayer and the hose back over the little fence. So you start that while you're inside the garden plot with inside the small fencing. And I kind of put it over the tree trunk as an easier way of accessing it. And kind of put over some of the length of hose over and walk back around. And then I pull the rest of the hose over and lay it neatly as I can on the ground. Or actually, preferably, you'll kind of hook the... Um, sprayer into the handle of the faucet. And now you got to remove the filter. And mainly I'm installing it and removing it to, to prevent theft of it. But um, when you, first you remove the top by rotating clockwise. And then when you're removing the bottom, you go the opposite direction, counterclockwise. And when you're handling the, the filter, you don't want to shake it or rotate it because that'll make the filter less effective. And as you can see, I left the hose kind of dangling on top of the wooden box there over the fence. Now we just go take that water filter and put it back on the back porch. <laughs> 